The saga of O.J. Simpson is a seemingly never-ending one. From the fateful day in 1994 when his ex-wife Nicole Brown and her friend Ron Goldman were brutally slain, to the epic trial of the century where O.J. was acquitted, to his subsequent jail time for kidnapping and theft charges, O.J.'s story over the past few decades has been the stuff of fiction. And of course, O.J. would have us all believe that his involvement in the murders was fiction as well. But whenever it seems like the story of the murders in Brentwood and O.J. Simpson in general will lose its place in the spotlight, another twist and turn will reveal itself. In this case, there have been new apparent revelations in recent years that purport to tell the story that O.J. may have had an accomplice when he murdered Nicole and Ron. And yes, we're aware he was acquitted of the murder, so you can assume that whenever we refer to O.J. as having done it, we mean allegedly. Join Facts First as we present O.J. Simpson's murder accomplice takes his story public. In the years since O.J. Simpson was arrested and tried for murdering two people in Brentwood, California, he's hardly kept a low profile. In fact, he managed to get actually convicted of a different crime and serve time in jail more recently. After holding several people hostage in a Vegas hotel in 2007, trying to get back memorabilia that had been stolen from him, Simpson was convicted of multiple felonies. These included kidnapping, assault, and robbery. For those convictions, he served nine years in jail before being released on parole in 2017. In 2021, his parole was lifted, making him a free man once again. Even more recently, the Brentwood murders of 1994 have come back up because of potential new revelations tying a second person to the crime scene. And the idea that O.J. might have had an accomplice, or even that there was potentially a witness, has made people revisit the events of that fateful night. It's important to remember that O.J. has already been tried and acquitted of double homicide in the Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman case, meaning he can't be tried again. But it doesn't mean that if there was another person somehow involved, or there, that they couldn't be potentially charged for any crime they committed or helped commit. The Script In September of 2021, a Miami newspaper called New Times published a story about a man named Charlie Ehrlich. In it, they reported on a movie script that they'd received a copy of. It had been reportedly floating around Hollywood at the time, and they were granted access to it, provided they didn't give up any major secrets from it. But they still published an expose on the script and what it reportedly said about O.J., the murders, and Charlie Ehrlich. The script was written by L.A.-based producer Eric Laby. New Times spoke to Laby as they were doing research for their story. He confirmed that he wrote it based on purchasing the story option directly from Charlie Ehrlich a couple years prior. He said he has until 2026 to get it finished and produced, after which he loses the rights to the story. When New Times spoke to him, he said he was still working to corroborate the information in the story as told to him by Charlie. He even warned the paper that he might sue them for intellectual property theft if they reported on the script. Clearly, they decided it was worth a lawsuit and published their piece anyway. It told the tale of Charlie Ehrlich, a friend and associate of OJ's, as being not only with him on the night of the murders, but also potentially being a part of the crime. And while there hasn't been any confirmation of the allegation, the script does go into plenty of detail in recounting what potentially happened. Who is Charlie Ehrlich? Charlie Ehrlich is a former drug trafficker who's based out of Miami. He has also long been the manager of Dean's Gold, a strip club in North Miami Beach. Currently, he's involved in the social media and marketing of the club. And while some aspects of the script in question are in dispute, there are some aspects of his life that have been verified as fact. For example, it's known that Charlie was arrested in Atlanta in 1987 for a cocaine operation he ran. By coincidence, the DA who prosecuted the case was Nancy Grace, who went on to become a notable TV personality in the world of crime and justice. Grace even talked about Charlie's case in her book, Objection, and labeled him a major distributor of drugs in the city. She elaborated that not only was he a major dealer, but a dangerous man to boot. She said that when cops entered his apartment, they discovered it was wired so that Charlie would know if anyone, including cops, ever tried to enter, and that, among other things, the cops found a silencer in his closet. Grace convinced the jury that Charlie was guilty, and he ended up in prison. He served just over seven years of a 27-year sentence. What's also known is that Charlie was a close confidant of O.J. Simpson. 
Charlie moved from Miami to L.A. in the late 80s and through various connections became close with the former football star and actor. Charlie had been apparently moved in order to help traffic cocaine for another dealer, one with ties to Simpson. So eventually, the two met and became friends. It's unclear whether Simpson's needs were drug-based or for something else, or even if they were just simply friends. But when O.J. entered the Las Vegas hotel to retrieve his stolen memorabilia in 2007, Charlie was with him. That we know for sure. Charlie was actually convicted right alongside O.J., but for some reason didn't end up serving any jail time for his crime. In an interview with 2020, Charlie admitted to helping out O.J. because he was a friend. He said that he made a stupid mistake by coming along with Simpson and never should have been involved. Was he there for the murders? According to the script written by Laby, which is called Juiced, Charlie was most definitely there on the night Nicole and Ron were murdered. It tells the tale of Simpson hanging out at home, ready to leave in the next hour or so for a trip to Chicago. Charlie arrives at his house to ask about a cocaine debt. OJ then gets enraged, blaming it on his ex-wife, Nicole, as well as her friend, Faye Resnick. In the script, the two decide to go confront Nicole about it at her house. And then, of course, things go south very quickly. In the script, OJ apparently hands a bloody knife as well as his clothes to another man. But it isn't explicitly said to be Charlie. However, the inference certainly seems to be there. The script is narrated by the character Charlie, and in it, he refuses to admit whether or not it was him who was there that night helping OJ. OJ's Admissions Things got more complicated when O.J. put out his infamous book, If I Did It, in which he describes the night of the murders in chilling detail. He does it under the guise of, here's what hypothetically could have happened if I did it. It's a bizarre book that most people seem to think is his way of confessing to the murders and making money off of the notoriety. But since he'd already been acquitted, he was safe from prosecution. In the book, O.J. corroborates the story being told in the screenplay, Juiced. He talks about this hypothetical series of events and includes another person as having been there with him. He even named the person Charlie in the book. OJ even went on Fox for a one-on-one -on -one interview where he talked about the events as he wrote them in the book. In a fairly surreal several minutes, OJ talks about how things all went down, even laughing a bit when he occasionally points out that he's only talking in hypotheticals. And he talks about his friend Charlie, who it is assumed is Charlie Ehrlich, as the one who carried the knife, as well as who got rid of the evidence. And in real life, OJ's bloody clothes and the murder weapon were never found. Charlie denies it all. Of course, Charlie would face serious legal repercussions if he ever admitted to being involved, so he's been at the very least cagey about admitting what happened. But he's made claims that the screenplay contains inaccuracies and that the writer never finished up the deal to secure the rights to the story. And in more recent times, Charlie has brought a lawsuit against the Miami New Times for publishing their 2021 story about the screenplay. The suit claims the article makes it explicit that Charlie was a participant in the Grizzly murders despite knowing they were getting their information from a screenplay rather than by first-hand accounts or actual evidence. He's currently seeking $20 million in damages from the New Times, but time will tell if he'll win. While it's certainly an odd and interesting twist to the seemingly never-ending story of the O.J. Simpson saga, it seems unlikely that too much will actually come from these new revelations. A private investigator took a deep dive into the story and found there was enough corroborating evidence that police might feel compelled to revisit the case, but that also seems unlikely. A right big reason is that it would be supremely right embarrassing for the LAPD the if they somehow completely friend? missed well, that there was an accomplice over, involved. In the state tried OJ as a solo assailant, and it would look very bad for the LAPD if it was shown that they were that far off. So the odds of the case being reopened are pretty slim. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think OJ had help when he allegedly murdered Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman? Let us know in the comments section below.